Hello, students. Are you looking for something to do with your Halloween candy that's left over? Well, today we have a Halloween candy catapult challenge for you. We are going to make a catapult to, to project your candy into any distance that you choose. Make sure that mom and dad are working with you today uh, to create your catapult and to use it in the house or outside. Catapults can come in many sizes and shapes and we're gonna talk about those with you today. Before we start, there are a few words that we're going to be going over. The words that we're going to focus on today are listed here. The first word is catapult. Can you say that with us? Catapult. C-A-T-A-P-U-L-T. If you've never seen one, you're going to really watch them. They can launch missiles, they can launch candy, and they can really be used very usefully as a machine uh, in science and math. We're going to combine math and science today as we learn these things. Uh, a catapult is a type of a machine. Uh, it launches and propels things in the air. It involves a lever, and that lever is a rigid bar that's resting on a pivot. That rigid bar looks like this and rests on a point here that is going to pivot on what we call a crossbow. There is also a pivot point, and that pivot point is the place at which uh, the lever rests. And that is represented right here as the spoon that we're going to use today is resting on the crossbar. We're going to find that each of these pieces are representative of two types of machines, a simple machine and a complex machine. In order for it to work, we need to tap into two different areas today. We need to tap into potential energy. We always have the potential to do many things. This catapult will have the potential to send something into the air. And basically, once it's in the air, we have potential energy changing into kinetic energy as it moves. Now, you have probably seen some different things in math, and in math, we're going to be taking oh, a look at two different things. We're going to look at a bar graph, and we're going to look at a scatter plot, and then we're also going to take a look at a line graph. Students, what is a catapult? It's a question that we really asked and we tried to answer, but a catapult is a device that's used to throw an object over a distance. What you need to know is that a catapult can be as small as a rubber band slingshot that you use. And it could be used to toss a rock over a pond. Or it could be something as big as a long steam unit that is used to launch airplanes. Catapults come in all sizes and shapes, as you can see here. Today, we're going to make this type of catapult. We're going to use simple things around the house. And we challenge you to look around the house and see what you can do to come up with a very unique catapult. There's so many. Now, my son last night went ahead and made a catapult. This is called a trebuchet. This is a very old-fashioned type of catapult. Catapults go back in time. They go to 400 BC to the Greek town of Syracuse. And they can do so many things. They were used back then to throw rocks. They were used to launch things into the air to defend themselves. Like this one. This one is made with simple little things like paper clips that act as a weight. And we have what is called a lever here and a sling. And over here, you must have a little platform for the trebuchet and a pivot, as we talked about, which is where the fulcrum is. And it will launch any piece of candy, bring it back, and we can always measure how far that that can go. Let's have a little competition here. So let me show you how to make one of these. The very first thing that you need to do is you need to find some simple craft sticks. You can find them in any store or maybe some things around the house. I have about 10 here. 
You can use as many as you want. So out of these 10, I'm gonna take eight and I'm gonna create what you call the crossbow. Take some rubber bands and wrap the end as solidly as you can. This is gonna become the base of which you're gonna hold on to it to launch it. Do the same on the other side. Once it's together like this, you can decorate it, you can make it look great, but then you've got to take two of the other pieces that are left and put them together in the same way by only securing one of the ends. This is gonna become where you place the crossbow so that you can get a really good launch. So you put it in as simply as you can, and then you use another rubber band to secure it. Once it's secure, you can actually then add your spoon. The spoon can go right into the rubber band, just like that. And then I usually secure the rubber band around the spoon, woo, because there is your potential energy coming right at you. Now, when you do this, all you have to do is put it in there, and this is where you're gonna get that potential energy. Can't you see it, kids? It's really ready to go. Look, see, bring it back. Wow, it really wants to send something flying. So right now you're ready. I'm gonna use one that I've already created here, and we're gonna launch these very, very soon. And we're gonna take a little data and get a little information because we're gonna see which one of these candies is going to fly the farthest. Can you guess which one you think might want to go farther? I'm wondering what you think. All right, let's see. Now, before we do that, there's a couple things that we need to keep in mind. In everyday life, we need to do work. We need to create things. We need to build things. And years ago, they didn't have a lot. They created this one to protect themselves. And then it became useful for, for launching things. It progressed to be used by the military. Uh, and ballistic missiles are shot using types of catapults. Um, so where does that put a catapult? It puts it into one of two categories. It can be a simple machine or it can be a compound machine. What do you think? Well, let's talk about simple and compound machines and then we'll get back to where do you think this falls? So here are some examples of simple, some examples of simple machines that you will see all the time being used are something as simple as an inclined plane. How do we get a box into a, into a truck without hurting our back? We can use an inclined plane and push that box up. What does a wedge do? Well, an ax has a wedge. It actually allows us to chop up the wood. A lever, which is really what we're using uh, in our catapults, allows us to get that movement to be able to pull a nail and take it out of a piece of wood. We have a wheel and an axle, and I'll bet you've seen these, right? How many of you have a bicycle? All right, well, you can see that there's one just basically on our doorknobs, okay? We have a screw that undoes the jar, and we have a pulley, and the pulley can pull things up, such as the flag. Now, these are all simple machines, so see if you think a catapult falls into that category. Let's talk now about a complex machine. What is a complex machine? A complex machine uh, can be made and combined of a lot of simple machines. It is actually something that has multiple moving parts. Well, what has a multiple moving part? I bet you can give many examples of that. One of them is the one you see or used to see all the time, and that was a pencil sharpener. It has a wedges, it's got a wheel and axle, and it has a lever. If it has more than one part, it's probably more or less a compound machine. Here are other examples. The wheelbarrow, the bulldozer, clippers, our escalators that we see when shopping, and cranes. All of these are examples of a compound machine. So let's get busy now, kids, and let's go make our own, and let's launch. 
we are ready to take a look and see how far these will go. Now, as you can see, I have a measuring tape set up on the floor and we're marking where they fall so that we can actually measure those distances. So right now, let's begin with the first candy that's on our list. Okay, um, and I will change my slide here so that I can go to my next one because I think we are ready to go. Uh, we're gonna take a look at some graphs, okay, and make some predictions. We're going to graph today what we call a bar graph. And we wanna see, what does a bar graph do? A bar graph allows us to relate facts and get information. So we are going to take each piece of candy and the first one on the list, it's very handy, kids, to make a chart. So I have a chart here that represents the candy and the distance that it's going to go. We're talking about how far it will go on the floor, which is a linear distance below this. We're not talking about the force of the catapult, but just how far it will go. Um, we're going to measure that in inches. So we're using a big long measuring tape that is all in inches here and we'll be able to see just how far each piece of candy goes. Can you predict which one will go farther? I believe, hmm, I don't think I can share that with you right now. Um, let's begin with the large marshmallow first. It's my favorite of all of them. Let's just see now. This is not just large. I should have put down that this is jumbo because it's very big. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle my, uh, I'm going to angle this a little bit as I put it on there. It's pretty big. And let's just see how far it goes. Now I'm holding a book against there so I could be consistent in my throws so I'm not all over the place. Because believe me, we could launch it in many different ways. So right now, let's just see how far that this is going to go. Aha, so we have measured it. I have my helper measuring for us today and we're going to find how far that one goes. We're gonna mark that and we're gonna put it into our chart. Okay, and right now we can see that the large one has gone we have 45 inches. Let's move along. Okay, the next one we have is a lime candy. A little round lime candy, does that make it go faster? Does it make it go a little bit higher? Let's launch it. Okay, we can see that the lime candy has gone 69 inches as predicted. Okay, if you can see here on the measuring tape, kids, go all the way down and go all the way out, right? The numbers on the bottom, the black ones, are inches. The ones on the top represent feet. So 69 inches is where that has fallen. Okay, let's try the next one. The next one is my favorite, too. I love to eat these, and you do, too. The little pumpkin candies. Ready? Hmm, a little farther than I thought. Let's record that one, the pumpkin. Yes, well, the pumpkin. The pumpkin has gone 69 inches as well. Hmm. Okay. Let's try a candy corn. My candy corn, uh-oh. It may fly differently now. I think I stepped on it. There we go. Let's try the candy corn. Woo, the candy corn went quite a big distance. Let's just see how far that is. Whopping 104 inches. Not only tastes good, but it flies well. Let's try the next. Starburst, everyone's favorite. Does the shape and size of the candy change how it flies? What changes how a candy flies? Think about that before we graph. Wow. That was much farther than I anticipated. Now let's see how far that one was. That was 120. This isn't what happened when I tested them out. This is a little different result, okay? Which can be unpredictable when you're using your catapult just because of a lot of other factors that you're measuring. Let's try the last one. This one is a Skittle. Do you think this one will go farther? Right, so let's see, how far did that go? 89 inches. Okay, we are gonna graph this now. Very quickly, students, we have a graph. We're gonna do a bar graph which shows the data and is very, very visual. So right now, let's call this launch results. And I think I better use a different color. Launch results. 
The truth is, in a good bar graph, you never lose your hat. In a good bar graph, you are going to want to have a title of the graph. It's important. And you're also going to talk about what are you measuring. So right now, we are looking at the type of candy. And we are looking at what? The distance. Okay. So does the type of candy fly higher? Does it fly farther? This is the distance in inches. So we're going to write down and label our axes. These are called axes. This is called your x-axis. This is called your y-axis. And we're going to label that. So right now, we're going to represent all of our candy by a bar. So the first candy we're going to put down here is our marshmallow. I'm going to call that M. Our lime candy we'll call L. Our pumpkin candy, our candy corn, our starburst, and our skittle. So we'll use an SK for skittle. And now, what we have to take a look at is we have to look at the scale. So let's judge what are our smallest to our largest values. Our smallest goes from 45 all the way to 120. So we can actually draw our bars in various increments. We can go in units of 10 all the way up to 120. Well, we can go in units of 20 all the way up to 120. So right now, let's take a look at, um, let's do them in units of 10. So let's start here. This would represent 10 inches, 20 inches, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, Okay, and then we've got right here 110, and then we had to go up uh, 120. And then what you do is you can, can now draw your bars. The large marshmallow goes up to 45. So let's find approximately 45 here, between 40 and 50, and we're going to draw a bar right here. And we can shade that in. That represents our marshmallows flying. Our line candy is next, 69 inches, so very close to 70. So we're going to come right to here, not quite 70, okay? And we're going to draw our bar. This represents uh, our, our line candy. Uh, we can do the pumpkin, which is 69 as well. So here's another one, very, very, very similar to that one. Exactly the same, as a matter of fact. And let's think about, you know, looking at the graph and seeing what we can interpret and what we can figure out by looking at the graph. Um, the candy corn, which we saw, flew pretty much pretty far. It's 104, so it's uh, about right there. Ooh, that's a little bit wavy of a bar. Okay. Wavy, absolutely. Our starburst is the top winner. 120, let's take a look right here, and let's draw that bar. Okay, I always like to shade them in so we can see them. Oftentimes we can do things in different colors and do them in different ways. Skittle is 89, so let's find 90, and let's do right below it. Now, we have a graph. What do we do with the graph? We interpret data. We take a look at it. We decide if we can make a prediction on what candy could fly farther. What do you notice by looking at the graph? Which candy flew farther? As you take a look, we noticed that we knew that Starburst was our biggest one. Why would Starburst fly farther? Why would Skittles not go, well, why would skills actually fly very far, okay? What do we have that could account for that? Think about that. Could it be the weight of the candy? Maybe it's a heavier candy. Could it be the shape of the candy that also gives it the shape and the weight that makes it go farther? Graphs allow us to make some great predictions. And as you progress in your mathematical career, you're going to learn so many different types of graphs and be able to interpret all kinds of data. All right, students, now that we have created this, 
and we see it. I have a challenge for you today. I challenge you, after you've watched this video, if you can go in and complete the Google slide deck and learn more facts about catapults. Everybody can do it. And you can create a catapult, as we did here, that's unique, or you can create the one that we did today. I challenge you to create something that will launch. And I challenge you to take a picture of what you created and send it to your teacher. We can't wait to see what you can do, and I might even have to visit you in the classroom and commend you for your wonderful catapult. Now, one of the fun things about a catapult is this. You can take a catapult and you can launch right outside. Uh, do we have another piece of candy here? Let's grab one. Let me show you. So what you want to do is you can go outside in the backyard into the woods and you can hold it and launch it. And they go very far as you can see. But make sure nobody's in your way and your mom and dad know what you're doing. Have a wonderful Halloween, kids, and keep us posted.